Hey, uh, good news on the farm today. Uh, we finally got one of the little units that we need to get working with, and we got to get some work done on it. Um, I finally got my mini loader delivered. Um, as many of you probably know, um, I've been looking at these for quite some time. I did a review on a Toro one. I actually went after trying to buy a Toro one, but after a year of searching and dealing with post-COVID shipping issues and stuff like that. Um, it just wasn't happening. Um, in the Toro line, this would have been a, a dingo, it would have been called, in a diesel. And in the middle of a snowstorm here, I was able to pick up um, the Australian version, which is actually probably even a better machine than what Toro's got. I picked up some D-series LED lights, um, some nice ones that I've used on the tra tractors in the past and um, got those on online shipped to me. So basically, the machine arrived um, with the 401 bucket and an auger. I'll review the auger later. Um, my lights have arrived, and I'm just unboxing them here and getting them ready to get installed on the machine, and that was a good thing. I've been waiting, like I said, on the farm for a machine to help us clean out stalls and goat areas, and, and horse stalls and stuff for literally over a year, folks. Um, again, I started this project two years ago to get us something better to clean stuff out with. And it's just, it's unfortunate. I placed an order a year ago with Toro. Eventually had to cancel it because, you know, there's many reasons and many excuses they give. But the gist of it is, is they didn't have the Kubota engine to put in it. Um probably due to the war and COVID and everything else that the Russian engine wasn't just going to get to me in any time soon. So I canceled the order and went looking and tried to find even a better machine. And it came with everything I wanted, but the LED lights and a block heater. So that's pretty much what I'm doing. These uh, lights are just fantastic. I love the clips. I like that it comes with a switch and all the wiring harness on this. Um, Rigid did a really nice job of kind of designing these um, LED lights. You can buy these in kind of flood format, or you can buy them in spotlight format. I guess that's that's up to you. Um, I just need to kind of flood these out and get them on the machine. Um, the Outlaw is made in Australia, I think. It's imported in. Um, really nice man named Adam down in Missouri um, helps with that process very knowledgeable on the machine and he kind of explained where I could power this up from. I'm also, because we're in Minnesota, putting on a battery tender. Um, you know, it's just a small battery charger for 12 volt. I'm not going to mess around with not having it. And again, I'm going to put on a um, uh, uh, engine heater or block heater, I guess, uh, with the 3M sticky tape here. So out to the machine I go. I know it's dark when I start this process, but the machine came in late, so it's it's time to just get going on that. The one thing I got to do is get this attached to the battery. That's a piece of cake. Literally, you just got to attach the two ends to the battery and the clips on it. That will go to the battery tender, which is excellent. Um, now, I'll mount the battery tender on the wall like I always do, and wherever I park the machine, I can plug this into. It'll keep the battery nice and charged. That is a good thing because diesel's in Minnesota need to use their glow plugs or heat boxes or hot boxes or whatever they use to start, depending upon your engine. And in this case, um, this is a Yarmar engine, and um, you can turn the key to the left for 10 seconds, heat it up, and then, uh, you know, make good on getting it to start. Well, to do that, you need a good battery. So I'm going to get that mounted into this um, as quickly as I can. The other thing I'm going to do is way down here is the oil pan. I found that's the best place to stick um, an engine block heater. It's going to be kind of difficult for me to get my hands in here. Um, it is tight spaced, but you know, that's what you got to put up with when you're working with a machine. That's literally like 40 inches wide um, with 27 horsepower on it. Um, so I'm going to put it in there. I'm going to use a little cardboard and wedge it up in there until the uh, 3M sticky dries on really nice and good. And then I should be um, good to have a little block heater when I need it. Um, this unit is is really kind of a neat little critter. Um, you know, I've got this all wedged in there now, so hopefully I can get this thing started soon. It's got nice height, um, good power. I think it can lift up to like oh, 1,700 pounds. It's um, um, got uh, four speeds on it. 
Uh, it's going to have headlights on it here in a second and a reverse light on it for me. So basically I can see forward and backwards when I'm moving it. It's in diesel, which means it's a fuel I have here on the farm, which is excellent. I found um, a connector here that's got live power when the key's turned on, so that's what I'm going to use to hook my lights to. I found two um, nuts that are up on the top that we can use to put the brackets on. One I'm going to face forward here. It's right on the top of the machine. It clears very nicely when the bucket arms come up on this outlaw. And the other one's over by one of the fuel tanks. It has dual fuel tanks in diesel, so one on each side, so it stays nicely balanced. I like that, and they also communicate. I like that also. It has two hydraulics on the front, one that has like a locking or floating position, and the other one which is just a, a springboard position, so you can pick which hydraulic to hook into. Here I've got kind of a direction thing here. I'm going to take that off, and I'm going to mount this light to that, um, and then that way I'll be able to, to shine both forward and backwards when I'm working at night. There's holes already in the top of this thing, so I just had to find a grommet that would fit it. Um, so the grommet fits the button, the grommet fits in the hole. Basically, I used um, <clears throat> uh, waterproof uh, or weather-resistant little couplers. i got to get those heat shrunk on here yet. And, uh, you know, on go the lights, which is fantastic. Probably took me an hour to install the lights. Um, here I'm trying to kind of shrinky-dink these things down. It's so cold out here in Minnesota, my little lighter can hardly do it. So I didn't find this to be the most effective way to get it done. I ended up having to bring out my big heat gun. I think right now it's, it's a balmy 5 degrees out when I'm doing this. So it's a little cold on the hands, but again, I really want to get this machine up and running. I've waited over a year for it, and you know my farm hands have been mucking stalls and cleaning alleyways um, without the use of any equipment, and that's a little difficult. I originally tried out a tracked version of a Toro, and I absolutely loved its power, and I liked the tracks, but it was just too big. I needed a smaller, shorter machine to make the turns and the stalls and stuff, and this one is ideal. It really is the same dimension as as the Dingo Diesel that Toro makes. And, you know, that's kind of nice. But it's got more power. It's got a stronger engine than the Kubota I was going to buy. I think the Kubota I was going to buy was uh, 22 or 23 horses, I think. This one's like 27. Um, so it's got more power, more lift capability, and it's definitely got more speed. Uh, most of these little units seem to go about 3 miles an hour. But because this is a four-speed, so basically it's got a normal with a high and a low, and then it's got an overdrive. Um, so because you can manipulate the speed, you can really fly. Downside with the overdrive is it does lock the unit up in the front and put all the um, hydraulics to the wheels. There's nothing wrong with that. So again, if you pick something up and you kick it into overdrive, that object will stay right where it's locked, and you can just drive with it. But when you go in between... Your buildings, because my far buildings are about a hmm, quarter mile away, and my main building um, from each other. It's kind of nice to have that extra speed to, to get it going. So I've almost got these shrunk on. Once I get these shrunk on, that's pretty much about it. So now I've got the 3M sticky on the um, lock heater on. I attach the battery tender to the uh, positive and then the negative on the, on the ground of the machine. I've got the lights on it, one on the front and one on the back, which is excellent, so I can see both ways. They're really bright. I love that. They're uh, like 65, you know, Kelvin lights, so they're really a white light, too. Um, and I think it's going to work, work, work really well for me. I understand there's a learning curve with these, but until I get to that point, what can I do? I got the battery tender screwed to the wall and plugged in where I want it. That way, when I park the machine, I can just plug it in and know it's always in good shape. We're gonna do some quick zip tying up of some things here. I've got a, there's a, a oil hose down here for draining the oil out of this machine. I'm just gonna zip tie the extra cable for the uh, block heater to it. You ride in the back of these machines with your feet kind of straddling uh, the sides. I don't wanna step on my plug all the time, so I'm just kinda of getting it zip tied and out of the way. That's my daughter's helping with. And then I certainly could have cut the wires for the lights and really shortened everything up. But until I feel 
comfortable doing that. I think I'm just going to bundle those up too and just hang on to the extra wire. That way, in case anything gets warm or I accidentally nick it or damage it, I got some I got some wire to play with. I found that to sometimes be the best before just going cutting and making everything fit perfect. Because sometimes when you use these machines for the first couple of weeks, you realize you want to do something different. So for me, a couple electrical zip ties, um, get things in place, get them out of my way, and then I can start kind of learning the machine. Um, I'm going to start out with the machine in low. Adam recommended that. Um, he's, like I said, the outlaw uh, import and uh, service and uh you know, kind of guru here in the States. I think he's based in Missouri. So um, I'm going to start out low and get used to it just because the machine's got so much power and it's so quick and re responsive. And then um, as I get better at it, I plan on going a little faster. The bucket we put on it is a four, four in one bus bucket by Erskine, uh, E R S K I N E. Um, that was the bucket of choice that I put on it. Obviously, um, Outlaw, the dealership, would have put one on it for me before we shipped it up here. Um, but that's a bucket I already had. Um, I like working with that Erskine company. I can get all the parts, and I can get them through my, my local uh, implement dealer, which was John Deere. So um, I'm going to support them and, and use that bucket. Um, I'm looking uh, forward to using the auger for planting season. and. Um, I hope to be reviewing some type of grapple to grab hay too. Um, I, I don't I don't have that piece of equipment yet. Supply and demand is just difficult to get things. So here I've got things now finally kind of bundled out of the way. Like I said, there's a lot on this little little critter. This is a 27 horse Yarmar diesel, um, and it's sitting here with dual tanks on each side and basically an arm in the front to to lift up. You know your you know, your weight of your objects you need. So it's it's very narrow. It's measuring about, oh, I think it's like 41 or 42 inches wide at most. And this thing isn't very long. I think with the bucket on it, I'm just about 100 inches long. So I'm not very long at all. You take the bucket off, it's, it's even shorter. So I'm real pleased. I can literally get in a stall and pivot and get back out, which is fantastic. That's exactly what I wanted with something like this. Um, so now it's getting to the point where I got to fire this thing up and, uh, see if I can actually start to learn to run it and, uh, make some use out of it. Now, this is not, um, the trial and error video. I plan to put that out tomorrow if I can get all the editing done on it. So you'll get to see me using it for the first time, but I am going to fire it up here if I can. Again, it's very cold, so I'm going to have to glow plug it a little bit. And once I get this thing running, um, it should do, it should do really well. So... Um, it's, um, it's a neat machine to work with, folks. Um, I hope you can understand that as I start using it, I may look a little herky-jerky, but, um, that's, that's kind of the way it goes when you're trying something out. As you can see, I'm standing on it. I'm about 5 foot 10, and I weigh about 170 pounds, so I'm not a very big person, and you can see this is a pretty small machine. But I'm just going to lift it up here and work it through its paces. Kind of see what it can do. You can see it's still got snow on it. I can't help that. Um, it got driven up to Missouri um, during a snowstorm here in Minnesota, so it got a little little painted white uh, before it came. I'm just kind of understanding the controls at this point and just trying to get a feel of the machine. So you can see it actually goes up quite high, which is very, very nice. Um, I like it a lot. I'm going to be able to easily... Um, quite easily uh, get over the top of my, um, uh, I guess what I call it, skid steer dumpster and be able to dump in. I didn't realize that there were some zip ties attached to some of these hoses up front when I connected it up. So I'm just removing those so I don't break them free when I open up the bucket because I intend here to just again, manipulate the bucket a little more and kind of get used to it. This four-in-one bucket, I did have teeth putting on the front of it so that I could dig into the hay and push the hay a little bit more with it. And with the four and one, I can also open it up. And as I as I learn to open it up, I'll be able to grab things with it. I'm still, like I said, going to invest in a grapple though. That way, I can pick up logs and pick up huge piles of hay. I hope. And I'm probably going to put um, a small bale spear on it so that I can move, you know, six to seven hundred pound bales around on the farm too. It's kind of a multi-purpose tool. This little tool is going to be. 
It certainly will not replace the John Deere skid steer, but it'll fit in places that, you know, a typical skid steer just cannot fit into. I love the fact that this thing has very good reach. Um, I think it's I think it's going to work excellent within the stall area. What's a machine like this run? Um, you're certainly welcome to ask that. Um, out the door, shipping, lights, um, uh, the heater pad that I put underneath, um, the battery tender, uh, the four-in-one bucket, the auger system on it. Just trying to think. I think I think roughly a little machine like this probably runs between about. 38 and 40k new um, so if you're looking to buy one of these they're not the cheapest little thing out in the world but again when you have hours of stall cleaning and it takes manpower and people to do it um, and I I pay for labor on the farm even though my family really does try to do it all themselves we do have farm hands and we do pay them um, I think this is going to speed up everybody's situation. So here I'm kind of backing it into position where I want to keep this little critter. I've got my battery tender there behind me. I'm just kind of playing with the idle and bringing it down there a little bit. I'm checking out the last lights. I'm going to plug it in here and let it sit overnight. Um, hopefully tomorrow. I know they say there is a snowstorm coming in, but um, I plan on doing some more work with it tomorrow. And then maybe by tomorrow night, I'll be able to, to get another video out to you guys on um, how, it, how it does as far as, you know, my first time really using it and stuff. So here I'm just plugging in the battery tender. Um, I'm getting the, the cable ready for the uh, uh, future intent to plug it in for the, for the oil pan there to warm up and heat up. And uh, we should be good to go. This is my quick kind of setup of the Outlaw. Um, stay tuned folks. Like I said, I'm going to have another video coming out literally, hopefully within a day or so of the actual, um, running of it. And I'll give you my first thoughts with that. I'm sure it's going to be a little, um, choppy, um, as I start learning to use it and stuff, cause it's pretty strong, but Hey, I'm pretty proud on the farm to have this little piece of equipment. Appreciate you liking and watching and stay tuned. There'll be another video on how it functions.